In this example, we're going to be balancing chemical equations. So the goals here, and these are really the steps to balance the chemical equations, is we need to determine the total number of atoms on the reactant side, on the left side of the arrow, and also on the product side, on the right side of the arrow. And according to the law of conservation of mass, those numbers of atoms should be identical. So we're going to determine the correct number of molecules, and we're going to rep represent this with a coefficient in front. So right now, when you're given an unbalanced equation, it's probably going to have no number out in front. So remember the number out in front. This, t this is a coefficient, and this tells us the number of molecules. And so when you're balancing chemical equations, what you want to do is only change the coefficient and never, ever, ever change the number of atoms that's against the rules. That would change the chemical formula, and that's why we can't do it. So to reiterate, we are only changing the coefficients, which is the number in front, and we never, ever, ever change the number of atoms. That would be very, very bad. So the goal here is to get the number of atoms on one side equal to the number of atoms on the other for each type of element that you have. And in order to do that, you have to remember that the coefficient, the number of molecules, that's going to multiply to each individual atom in, in our little equation here. So this is going to multiply there, and it's going to be distributed here. So by, based on the distributive property. So we're starting with all ones. So that's really, really easy. We can tell that this isn't balanced because, for example, we have the number of carbons on this side is 2. Number of carbons on the other side is 1. So that alone tells you that it's not balanced. And this gives us a good hint on where to start. So what we're going to start is we're going to put a 2 here. This 2 then distributes to this carbon. And instead of having 1, now we have 2. And this 2 also distributes to this O2. So this O had 2 atoms already. And now it has twice that. So the number of O's on this molecule is 4 because this it, it, had, it was O2 to begin with. We now have two of them, so now it's O4. Okay, so we've got four there, and we've got one more oxygen here. If there's no subscript, that's a one. So the number of oxygens is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and you're going to notice that in order to figure out the coefficients, it's a lot of trial and error, so you're just going to have to work with it. Okay, but the number of oxygens over here right here is just two. So there's no coefficient here, it's just these two atoms, two atoms of oxygen. So we know that that's unbalanced, but seeing that every other molecule has multiple atoms in it, I'm going to save this oxygen for the very, very last one and balance everything else. So we've gone ahead and we've balanced carbon, so now carbon is set. We're going to skip oxygen, so let's go, the only one that's left now is uh, hydrogen. Okay, so we've got to change colors. So the number of hydrogens on this side is six because there's only six in this molecule, nothing there. And over here, we've got two total because we just got hydrogens here and there's that two subscript, no coefficient. So in order to get to six, we're going to need three hydrogens here. So three times two gives us six. Okay, so now we've got six hydrogens here, six hydrogens there. This didn't change the number of carbons. We have two carbons here. We've got two carbons there. That's fine. What we've got now is a problem because we've got two oxygens here, and we used to have five, but when we added in this three, it, it changed the number. So we've still got the four here. Two times two is four. And now instead of adding one, now we're adding three. Because it's 3 times the 1 is a 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay. And you can see that this is an odd number. And this right here is an even number. So really, in order to get to 7 as written, we would need a 
5 here, because 3.5 times 2 gives us 7, which is what we want. But that's not really the way that we do this. We have to have whole numbers, no decimals. So in order to make this a whole number, the easiest way to do that, because this is a 0.5, we're going to multiply everything by 2. So this example is a little complicated, but that's okay. I'll show you how to do deal with it. So this original coefficient was 1, now it's going to be 2. This original coefficient was 3.5, now it's going to be 7, twice that. This was 2 originally, twice that is 4. This was 3 originally, twice that is 6. So now, let, I'm going to clean up my mess for a second, and we're going to double check to make sure that all of the atoms are the same on each side. So you pause the video and do that right now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and figure this out. Now I've cleaned up my mess. Uh, the number of, oops, number of carbons is 2 times 2 is 4 number of hydrogens, 2 times 6 is 12, and the number of oxygens on this side, 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, coming over here now. Number of carbons, we only see it in this molecule, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 total atoms. Number of hydrogens, to see it in this molecule, 6 times 2 is 12. And the number of oxygens, we see that in two different molecules. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 6. So 8 plus 6 gives us 14. So is the number of carbons the same? Let's check in yellow. 4 and 4, we're set. 12 hydrogens and 12 hydrogens, we're set. 14 hydrogens and 14 hydrogens. This is now balanced with these coefficients, 2, 7, 4, and 6. Okay, so what this means now is that if we were to read this reaction as a sentence, two molecules of C2H6 react with, that's what the plus means, seven molecules of O2, the arrow means to yield, four molecules of CO2, and six molecules of H2O. So that's our chemical sentence. And these numbers up in front are very, very important because that tells us the proportion. This is a recipe, and this tells us, and you can you know, replace the word molecules with cups, like two cups of this, seven cups of that, makes four cups of this, and six cups of that. So this is just the recipe, this is just the proportion. It's going to be very, very important in following videos for this topic. Okay, so that was a complicated one, and I'm going to show you actually an easy one. And looking at this, you might not think it's easy, because we can see that it's full of polyatomic ions. We see nitrate, we see phosphate everywhere, right? So every single one of these molecules contains a polyatomic ion, but this is actually quite simple if you consider the polyatomic ion as one unit. So here's nitrate. So we have one nitrate here and one nitrate there, so that's actually balanced. One phosphate here, one phosphate there, that's actually balanced. What's not balanced are the cations in the beginnings of these. So we've got one silver here, three silvers there. So what we need to do to balance this, put a three in front. Okay. This gives us now three nitrates. So to balance that, put another three right here. So now we have three nitrates. This now gives us three potassium as well, which is what we have over here. So go ahead, pause the video, add up all the atoms, and see if this is now balanced. Okay, so I'm going to do this maybe in purple. Okay, so the number of sil silver on this side is 3. Number of silver on this side is 3. That's balanced. I'm going to treat the polyatomic ions as one thing because that's easier for me. You can treat them individually. Number of NO3 on this side is 3. Number of NO3 on this side is 3. 
because this distributes to both parts. Okay. Number of potassiums on this side is 3. Number of potassiums on this side is 3. So that's balanced. These are all balanced so far. And the number of phosphates on this side is 1. Number of phosphates on this side is 1. So this whole thing is balanced and follows the law of conservation and mass. So the way we would read this chemical sentence is three molecules of silver nitrate combines with one molecule, because if there's no number here, it's secretly a one. One molecule of K3PO4 yields or produces one molecule, because remember it's invisible, one molecule of silver phosphate and three molecules of potassium nitrate. And remember those coefficients are going to be very, very important. Those tell us the proportion, those tell us the recipe.